Hey guys, happy ITE 115ers day. We're heading now into module three of Word and check this out. We're gonna make a business letter. Oh, well, a two page business letter. This top part right here is called the letterhead. A lot of times your company would already have a letterhead, but we'll create our own. We have our business letter that's in this format. Even though we'd probably end up emailing this, we still, do a lot of business letters to apply for jobs, uh, thank, thank people for interviews and companies. But this one is gonna be for a Sunset State College and they're setting up an orientation and registration with a schedule on the second page. Ready to roll? I've opened SAM and here's where you can do the reading. Let me click and download the start file. I'm gonna go ahead and do this now. We're gonna need this picture of a flaming eagle so now this will be in your download folder. So let me open my blank document, but don't forget it's encrypted with your name. And let's get started on our business letter. In my SAM starter file, I'm making sure, of course, that my show high tool is turned on, looks great. And the first thing I'm gonna start with is letterhead. Even though typically a company might print it on a piece of paper, now all that things are more digital, and people are home more often and working from home, let's make a digital one. So we're gonna to go to the Insert tab, and under the Insert tab, we're going to go under Shapes. We haven't used this yet, and there are a lot of these predefined shapes. We're gonna use something a little boring, but important, a rectangle. Click on that very first one, and you'll notice once you're on the sheet of paper that your mouse turns into this plus sign, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to resize it, but draw a long rectangle along the top for us to use our letterhead. Now, it's blue because we haven't preset a theme, and we all have probably different sizes. So let's go up to the Shape Format tab in the Size group, and we're going to resize this to be a half inch by five inches. And so now that we re-get that size in there, we should all have the same size. But as you suspect, it not all of us is centered. So let's worry about that. Do you see this little tool right here? You have to have your rectangle shape selected to view this. When I click it, this is all about layout. And we can um, make sure things are laid out, like the words on top and behind. The other piece that we're gonna fool with is this position. And this is so that it's all positioned. And pictures really are worth a thousand words. Like if we pick this one, it would be a sheet of paper with the image uh, on the top left, top center, or top right, middle, middle center, middle right, and bottom left, bottom center, bottom right. I'm gonna go with this one so that now all of our letterheads exactly in the center. And as far as my text wrapping is concerned, I am going to do this one called top and bottom so that any of my running paragraphs would be above or below, in our case, below. So by the way, this one would mean that the image is behind the text or in front of the text. We're gonna to pick top and bottom. We want our color to relate to our Sunset State College. So I'm gonna click the shape and then this three arrowed item. Uh, we haven't come across many of these, so let me point out, we call this third arrow at the bottom the More button. And what the More, when I click on it, gives me a gallery of more selections. Under this gallery, under More, I'm going to pick this one, Moderate Effect Orange Accent 2, you know, Sunset State College. And let me see, I'll do a shape outline. I'll pick this top gold called Gold Accent 4. A little hard to see, but it's starting to come around. What's next? Next, I want to do a shape effect. So I'm going to come right down here to shape effects. I'm going to make it glow a little bit, and I don't want it too strong like these, so I'll be a little more subtle and go with glow five point gold accent color four. And let me point out, we haven't switched the theme, so that's why we're seeing these standard office colors, if you would. So we've got our letterhead, and now we want to add a little text to the shape. Um, it won't let you just type in it, so right click on it, and you can pick Add Text. And let's type in the text Sunset 
state, college. Notice it's a little too small. So ultimately, let's increase that font size. Let's highlight it and go to the Home tab. Instead of going straight away and picking size 24, let me show you we can use this larger A. It's called Increase Font Size. And I'm going to keep clicking it, see it grow here until it gets to size 24. So I think that looks good. Let me go ahead and hit Bold as well. And now we've got a nice looking letterhead. I've zoomed in a little tighter so you can see everything. I want to next add a picture of our school's mascot. In this case, it's an eagle. By the way, at CVCC, it's a cougar. And let me tell you, I'm not too happy about that. A middle-aged woman, cougars, well, you'll get it later. I. Anyway, let's go back under the Insert tab, and I'm going to click Pictures. You can get online pictures, so I can click Insert pictures and let's say there are literally millions of these I'm looking for an eagle I could find all of these great eagles and we could click on them and insert them but because we're in a situation trying to all do the same thing let me cancel out of that and instead go to insert pictures this device and if you remember under downloads we downloaded a picture at the beginning from Sam. It's called Support WD3 Flaming Eagle. Let me just throw that in. Now, as you can see, this is not a small eagle, and that's gonna be hard to put to the side of left and right of our little letterhead. Notice down here at the bottom, uh, when it was clicked on before, there was alt text. Alt text is for those who are visually impaired. So we can see it a little bit better. Now that we have this desired picture, I'm going to make sure we resize it a little bit. And instead of just uh, sizing it here, I want to show you something else. This time, with the picture selected, go to the size group. We've never clicked on one of these arrows before, and this is actually called a launching arrow. When we launch this, it opens a window with a lot more features. There are actually over 5,000 features in the premium version of Word alone. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come down to where it says height and right now it's at 20 percent let's change it to 10 percent and you'll notice as soon as i hit enter here it gets a lot smaller um, so we could change that uh, relative to where the lock locked aspect ratio is but ultimately i am going to use this up here i want to show you that we can make this 0.5 a half inch and then let's go change this to 0.65. Uh, let me get rid of the other one. So now it is much smaller, but you'll notice it won't let me place it right before that letterhead. Before we do place that letterhead, I'm going to change the color of that image. We'll get to moving it in a moment. And there's all these really cool, under picture format, really cool color tools that we can use. Click color right here. And we can actually pick this one right here. It's gold accent color for dark. So you can really set even transparent colors and do all kinds of variations with different color palettes. So now we all have this orange one, but I'm still having trouble getting it up there to this little spot. But before we do that, I'm also gonna add a picture border and pick this gold one on the edge so it kind of matches the other picture. I need to play with the picture layout. So I can click this tool right here. This is what is not allowing it to move up until that little spot. So we have to pick what we did before. We're gonna pick top and bottom. And now it'll let me put it right in this spot and it's looking pretty good. Now I wanna copy and paste this object as well. So I'm going to come up to the Home tab. I want to copy it and place it on this side. So I'll click Copy right here. And now I want to paste it. I'll click Paste right now. It first goes here, but since we have the layout options already set, it'll let us just move it over to this right side uh, to create a little balance there. So now it allows us to move that object I think I'm going to flip it around so it has that mirror image because it's easy to do. Click back on the picture format tab and what I can do up at the top 
is I can flip it. This is the tool right here called Rotate Objects. And you can see I can rotate in different directions. I'm going to flip it horizontally. And that way the two eagles are kind of looking at each other. Well, now it's time to format and enter some text. So let's click down here below the letterhead. What we're going to do is put the school's office address right here. So we're going to click the center button and uh, go ahead and look above figure 3-27 in your book. And I'll meet you back after we get that typed. Now I've typed up to the zip code of where the school is located in uh, California, but I wanna put a symbol to kind of break this up so it doesn't look too boring. So by going under the insert tab of Microsoft Word, come up here and click symbol. There's some common ones, but there's actually over 64,000 symbols that are possible. Scroll down just a little bit here. We're looking for this big black dot right here and it's actually called the Unicode name is a black circle and now by clicking insert and hitting close I've got this nice looking circle. I'm going to hit the space bar one time and type the phone number 415-555-0199. By the way any phone number in the US that starts with 555 is never real. Uh, the United States decided not to use those three digits so therefore if you see a phone number in a movie or in a textbook like ours, um, that's why it's not real. So if anyone ever tries to pressure you to give you um, them your digit, your phone number, just give them a 555 number. They probably don't know this. Click the space bar and click symbol. This time I don't have to go all the way back to more symbols. Notice the black circle is now first, so I can put it back in. I put a space before and after that. And now I'm gonna type the school's address, sunset.edu. But when I go uh, to press the enter key here, um, it will, uh, I still wanna underline it. Go ahead and press that enter key and come back and click on the end of sunset.edu. Sometimes if you don't do that, the line that we're about to do or what we call a border keeps moving down the page with you. So now what I want to do is come over here to the home tab to paragraph. I want to put a line before I knew much about computers. I used to just type dash, 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 dash. But now I can click right here and pick the very first option, bottom border. And boy, that looks like a polished, beautiful letterhead right there. So we've now got that nice line. Uh, now we want to uh, come down below. We want to clear off any formatting uh, so that it doesn't keep uh, think that what we have going on. If you ever need to clear formatting, we can do so by clicking this button right here called clear formatting. And if you already have some other changes made in here, it'll get rid of any of that. So it, it got rid of the centering. So we're back to left and any other font changes. We didn't really make any, but good to know if you ever need to get rid of whatever you've set to get it cleared out. Now we're about to just start on the business letter and business letter always has a lot of the same elements. It's got a date, it's got an address, it's got a sincerely, it has a signature box. But what we wanna do first is skip that first line, but notice we've got all this extra space. So I want you to click backspace, go back up to this line. Remember from last chapter, Microsoft Word always wants to put these giant gaps in between text, and we want to put as much business letter here without those gaps, but we're going to do it different this chapter. I want you to come up and go to your styles and pick no spacing, and then we're also now going to hit enter. Notice how much tighter that is. Good. We're not going to have those big gaps. We also want to set a tab. Typically, the date, sincerely, and the signature, and the uh, name at the bottom are all indented. Three and a half or four inches to see what your company kind of does. We're just going to go with three and a half inches. Let me show you how to do that. You come to the ruler. If it's not turned on, don't forget you go under View and Check Ruler. And I want you to go and check. just click. It'll make an L at the middle between three and four at the three and a half mark. That L right there is for left tab. And let me show you how it works. 
Now when you hit the tab key on your keyboard, it goes over three and a half inches. And this makes everything nicely aligned on my document. Now, I'd usually put today's date here, but I'm turning in a SAM assignment. So let me put the date that they tell me to put, April 19th, 2021. And we never want to use what I call a business date. And let me kind of show you what I mean by a business date. Uh, I'm opening OneNote here real quick. Let me go to a nice new page. OneNote is a note-taking program in Office. This is what a business date is. Let me get my drawing tools out here. Let's say I want to do a little drawing. And I want to put in uh, the date. Maybe it is um, 10, 1. I'm trying to draw here. Uh, 10, 1. There we go, 2020. We don't want to use a date like that because the rest of the world does not think this is October 1st, 2020 or 2021 or whatever year. What the rest of the world thinks this date, including Canada and the military even, is think this date is January 10th. Most countries put the day, the month, and the year. So if you're ever in this situation in business, make sure you spell out the full name of the date and don't use a date like that. And so that's why we're putting April 19, 2021. There might be people and folks that um, that year is, uh, they might have it a different way of doing it. Be careful when you travel abroad that you uh, write out dates as well, or they'll have the wrong hotel reservation, let's say in London. Hey, go ahead and skip two lines, hit enter, and then go to that third line we're going to write who this letter is being sent to. And this is the is going to go on the outside of the envelope. It's Mr. Caleb Thomas. He lives at 982 Bartlett. And the only, we don't want to abbreviate anything here except the state or province or country. So 982 Bartlett Street. And this is found in Live Oak, comma, CA. And we're going to put the zip 95953. Um, I think most of you know zero start up in New England for zip codes. Uh, we're in the twos coming down to California. Florida is a three and they keep getting bigger and bigger until you go all the way up to California, Hawaii, and Alaska. I'll start with a nine. So hit enter twice. We're going to put dear Caleb and we're going to put a comma right there and hit enter twice. And I want you to type what you see in figure 338, and I'll come back and join you in a second. Notice I've typed in the two paragraphs right here, and they're not indented. A business letter, actually it's called a modified business letter, is all aligned to the left except the date and the closing block that we'll do later. After we put, we'd like to inform you of important upcoming dates, hit enter twice. What we want to do here is add a table. Why? Well, we've all got emails and not read them all, right? Me included. So um, if we see something, though, in a table, people are more likely to take notice. So to create a table, let's click Insert and Table. And we don't need to know how long the table is going to be um, as far as you know depth. We just need to know how many rows, uh, in this case, how many columns they're going to be. So I'm going to just go with these, click these three oranges because we're going to have three columns. And to type inside of a table, uh, we're going to type the word, the date that they're going to come to school. Hit the tab key, T-A-B, to go between the different columns, event, and then notes. And I'm going to have you type in figure 343 and meet me back. I've typed in my table, but let's face it, it looks pretty basic at best. Let's change things up. I want you to make sure you click on the Table Design tab, and in the Table Style Options, uncheck First Column. What this means is, as I style it, I don't want my first column to look different than the rest of my table. So I don't want the first column to stand out. I'm going to drop down these table styles by clicking on this more button to click quickly visually change the style. And I'm going to go under grid tables 
to this third one over, it's grid table one, light accent two. And it's going to change up my table to a nice orange to kind of match my, as you remember, the uh, we're Sunset State College in this example. And now we want to select a column. We're going to select this column right here. And a quick and easy way to do it is when you come over to this area at the top, you'll see you have to hover around. You'll see this arrow that I'm showing you right now. Click that arrow and it will allow you uh, to see that whole thing. You'll see a little mini toolbar. And we can now hold down, let's say, this I or Control I to italicize that column alone. Now, we've now decided, oh my goodness, we've got this all done almost, but it turns out we've got this another date between August 16th and 17th and August 23rd. So I'm going to need and add a row to the table, and this happens quite a bit. So what I want you to do is position your um, mouse, just hover over here, you'll get this little plus sign, you don't even have to go to the top. Click and it'll add a little row right there. And now you can type in, there's a new date that you see on August 16th through 20. And this will be our welcome week. And hit tab again. And this is gonna be get schedule during orientation. Now, just an interesting thing. Do you notice it did the italicize? It kind of figures out, well, the rest of this column is italicized, so I guess I should be as well. I went ahead and typed in the text from figure 351, 52, 53, and partly of 54. <laughs> so just typing. So now I'm going to hit uh, and enter after this, and I'm ready to do what we call the closing box. So that this is where we say sincerely and sign our name and so forth. Now remember, we set that tab earlier and that tab is still in my ruler. So I'm gonna press the tab key to go back over three and a half inches, type in sincerely, comma, and don't get fancy here with business letters, always kind of put sincerely. Don't do anything with love or anything weird on a business letter, guys. Uh, we don't want that kind of job. So press enter for me four times, one, two, three, four. So why did I skip so much space? Hopefully you said to sign your name. So you would take a black ink pen and sign this, or if we're doing this digital, you can sign it with digital ink. There is a draw tab up here and we could sign it. Uh, I won't complete that, but you get the idea there that we could sign it. So good to know that we can do that even if we're doing it digitally. So let me now go back to uh, the fourth line down here, and I want to close it, so I'm gonna hit the tab again. Uh, the young lady's name who wrote this was Lucy R. Song, and we hit enter, and it's traditional that we also put her title if there is one, and she is the Director of Admissions. Good. Now, we're going to head on to the second page, but I want to bring up something now that I want you to understand. Remember, if we were going to send this in a traditional envelope, you would put the envelope in your printer. Usually there are little arrows in plastic on your printer if you had one. But I want to show you how it's much easier now to send it. We can click under Mailings and click Envelopes. And what I want to show you, when you click ma um, mailings and envelopes, it already takes this Mr. Caleb Thomas and pops it in here. And this picture right here would show you how to feed it based where the stamp goes on your printer. Well, if you had a printer. Uh, you don't have to print this. You could put a return address uh, as well right here. So I just want to show you, you wouldn't have to type in the whole address. Never put a nice, beautiful business letter in an envelope and then grab a crayon and scribble on it. Make it printed nice out as well. So wanted to show that to you. Hey, let's now go on to our second page. So I want you to click after Director of Admissions. And like we learned in the last chapter, we don't want to hit Enter, Enter, Enter. We want to do a page break. So go to Insert and go down to Page Break. Now we're on page two. We want a really big title. 
so that they know maybe to bring this page with them. So go to the Home tab, let's click Center. Uh, let's also change this to size 36 so we get a nice big letter. We'll click Bold and uh, let's go ahead and change the font color. Uh, we're going to pick this we're going to select this color right here. It is orange, accent 2, darker 25%. And then I want you to type in the text orientation and registration. Click enter. And then student schedule on the second line of the title. Now we also want to select both of these lines as a paragraph. So highlight both of them. And we're going to click on this border tool, we did that earlier, and the border tool that we're going to select is near the bottom this time. We're going to pick something called borders and shading. This gives us more options. So we're just going to have a specialized border, not around the whole page like we did in the last unit, but in the flyer, but on this one just around these two lines to make a paragraph. So some of the things I'm going to select over here, I'm going to do a box. I'm then going to come down and pick uh, the style, this one right here near the bottom, this one, there we go. And I next want to pick under color, that same color um, that we picked before, and that is, uh, no, I'm gonna pick this one actually, orange accent to the top one, sorry. And for the width arrow, I'm gonna pick two and a quarter. I want it really uh, to stand out right here. And then we're gonna click, um, the buttons are automatically selected to do all around the edges, so we don't have to click any of these. We want it around our paragraph, so we just click OK. And now we get this nice looking border right around it. Go ahead and click. To get out of this border, press Enter at the end of all formatting and now you'll get back to this line um, hit enter whoops hold on and now what we're gonna do down here is hit press enter please type in the text on figure 361 meet you back after you get that typed in highlight the two words two days and make sure you just get the s there Go up to the underline, instead of doing a standard underline, let me show you something different this time. There's lots of different types of underline, who knew? So we're gonna pick this one right here, and then go back and click again and pick underline color. The color that I ultimately want you to select is this top orange one right here, orange accent two. Now I've decided I wanna use that same kind of formatting, orange, underline, on these two words, dress accordingly. But I wanna show you a new tool to do that and it could save you a lot of time ultimately. So click anywhere back on two days. Go up here in the clipboard under the Home tab and select Format Painter. This will uh, allow you to take the look of a particular section and you can apply that look to other content in your document. So click that paintbrush and then click right in front of the D, dress accordingly, let go, and it applies both the under type of underline and the orange color without really having to apply it. Click at the after the period and hit enter twice. And what I wanna do next is something super cool. It's inserting a smart art graphic to really call the eye to make it look uh, very important. So uh, with your cursor on the second line down here, I want you to click the center button and we're gonna put in a smart art graphic. Let me show you where that is. Click the insert tab and smart art graphic is under the illustrations in that group. So when we click smart art, we get all of these choices and there literally are over a hundred if you just scroll down here, you can kind of see what I mean by smart art. They're all kind of categorized. Um, the one that I like the best is this list one. And so select list in the left pane. And the one that we're going to ultimately pick here, 
to see some of the items in the list, you can click, but the one we're going to ultimately select is this one down here near the bottom called the grouped list. So go ahead and click OK. And as you notice, it comes in blue and we can actually type right inside of these or open this little pane here by clicking the arrow and it makes it a little bit easier to type. But I'm not going to need all of these items. So I'm going to click on this shape right here on the edges and hit delete. Click on this shape and hit delete. And to get rid of this third shape entirely, click on the edges and hit the delete key. Now we're left with two big columns. Now you have choice. You can type right in here like day one or I kind of like this text area. So we could type in over here, check in space, and they're gonna check in at nine o'clock, dash, and then also to 10 o'clock is when check-in is, end of parenthesis. And then our next bullet would be welcome, and general, info session, which will be from 10.15-11.45. No extra spaces in there. So that looks good. Now we can add um, a shape to a smart art graphic. So what we ultimately want to do here is, in other words, add a third blue box. Just all we have to do is come over here after we type that and get hit enter. It will create that third bullet because we do need it that day. And now we can type over here lunch and 12 1245. No extra spaces. And that's added for that shape. Uh, let's go ahead and go ahead, look at figure 3 75. And we'll come back and change its design after you get it all typed in. You can add shapes by just keep adding the text pane or up here you can click on add shape to continue to add. So once you get this all typed in, I want to make it a little more colorful. It kind of doesn't match my whole sunset college image. So I'm going to come up here with it selected on change colors. And I'm going to pick this very first one that looks really super colorful right here. And I want to change the smart art style. And notice if I drop the more button, we get all kinds of crazy cool ones, some of which make it almost impossible to ultimately read the thing. I'm going to actually pick this one right here uh, as a little bit of a subtle effect that's going on there. Now we can resize this smart art graphic. Uh, we can display both pages on the screen at once. Now, if we, if we come on down here and go to the view tab, we can make this much smaller and you can kind of see uh, what we've put together on these two pages. Now I'll close that extra panel there now. So this is what it should all look like. Uh, as you get to finish this up. You can make this smart art graphic a little bit larger uh, by pulling it down a little bit because we have the space on the second page uh, to do so. So we can resize that to fill it up, but be careful we don't go on to like I just did there, I'll hit undo, onto that third page. So just a little bit larger. So we can have that um, when you finish this, I want you to save uh, your letter so that you can turn it in. You will see the last page of the books talking about the envelopes, but we've already taken care of that. So now go to File, Save As, save it by the required um, word name, and turn that into Sam. And you have one more flyer to do this week. Guys, Keep it up. Next week, we're heading into Excel. It does get harder. So get all your work done in time. This is not a hard class uh, because Sam gives you that second object to fix anything that you make an error with. 
Keep up the good work, everyone. Take care.